Hello all, Kirsty here today. Um, I've been away for a long time. Um, I've had so much going on with work that I haven't really been in a great place to be able to video. And what I thought I'd do as it's half term, I am here in my PJs, my Harry Potter PJs, um, to do a series of videos between now and probably Christmas entitled The Reading Slump Diaries. Because over the last two months I've only read about 10 books and any of you who know what I'm like reading knows that's really horrifying and a bit weird so I am going to talk through different bits and pieces I've been doing to get me into reading again and to get me over the whole reading slump fiasco um over the next series of videos so this video part one reading slump diaries part one is about one thing I do to get over reading slumps is to reread some old favorites and I'm very very lucky in the last month two new editions of some of my favourite books have been read, one of which I loved and the other one not so much. So, starting on a positive. Um, very, very lucky that this beauty was published this month, it's October, yeah, and it's wonderful. Um, if, you have, if you love Harry Potter and haven't had a chance to get hold of a copy of this, do. It's beautiful. It's the first book. It's the illustrated edition and I adore it. Um, I mean I adore Harry Potter anyway, hence the fact that most of my clothes, literally most of my clothes are Harry Potter themed at the moment. But you can see a lot of the pages have wonderful beautiful pictures of the series and they're just beautiful um, and they really really add to the whole story and I honestly could read them forever they're just so good like this one this one's one of my favorite Harry and Dumbledore yeah um, if you've got a young person who's never read Harry Potter before I'm trying to think of a world where that person might exist get them this get them into it young it's beautiful and I just like stroking it so yes this one's wonderful I'm actually at the moment trying to consider justifying to myself why or how I can get away with buying the deluxe edition at 150 or pound I might justify that myself at some point so yeah that really helped get me out my reading stamp because I just adore it it's comfort reading it's best um the other thing that I read and I haven't actually got the book I've just got the dust jacket because it appears my husband's taking it off to read it. He seems really keen to read this and I don't really know why, but there you go. Um, the 10th anniversary edition of Twilight came out. So at the front of the book, you have Twilight in its original form. And then you flip over and read from the back and you have this new version, Life and Death, Twilight Reimagined. Um, I love Twilight and I don't want to bash it because it got me into reading. Okay. I wouldn't be the reader I am now if it wasn't for Twilight because it was one of those things that really, really got me into reading. I have this beautiful edition, actually. This one, which is the first UK edition, which I liked because I thought she looked a bit like me when I was that age. Um, in a creepy way, but there you go. Um, but it's just one of those books that doesn't hold up. The... The thing that irritated me the most with this is the names. Why do you spell Edith with a Y? Just why? There's no point. And Michaela with a muck Kayla. No. Just no. Spell them normal. And some of the names, the gender swap names. It says it's gender flipped. It, no, it's just names. Or I don't even know what it's. What was it? It was. It was like seen as this, like, oh, look, it's gender flipped. It's really exciting, cool. No, it's not. They've just changed the names round to make all well, most of the male ones female and vice versa. It's not any good. It don't make it better as a story. It really doesn't, actually. And actually, most of the time, I was sort of despairing. And it got to the point when I thought, all right, give it a go. I'll read it. I did until about thirty percent of the way through. Then I started skimming until the end and this is where the spoilers come in if you don't want to know about the end of this turn me off now okay the end because I started thinking well if that happens how can this happen if he's a boy and Bella's now a boy and all the problem with all this Rene Esme shite that no one liked anyway goes which is really good because Bella 
Bo, seriously, Bo, um, dies at the end and then becomes a vampire at the end in the ballet studio. But even so, that's rubbish is gone. I'm, I'm very glad that he was killed off at the end because it meant we didn't have to endure New Moon Revisited or the next one. God, what is the next one? Eclipse Revisited or even worse, Breaking Dawn Revisited. So be grateful this exists in the form it does. It's a money maker. It's a really clever money maker because it means it lures us all in to think, oh, let's read it and see if it's different. It's not. Don't waste your money. Just don't. It's not worth it. So, that is part one of my Reading Slump Diaries videos. Tune back in soon for my next one.